What's up guys? I'm going to show you how to combine a React application with a Feathers.js server. So in this example, I'm going to be using my MenuMonkey application. I have a Feathers.js server here and then a React application here. But you can follow along if you have your own project you'd like to do this with. The only requirement is your React application is not server-side rendering, it's a static application and uh, you have an express server it'll work with. Uh, this will also work though with pretty much any server you have as long as they can st serve static files. But I'm gonna be showing you how this works with Feathers.js, which uses express. Um, and if you don't know whether your front end is static, can create static uh, HTML files, if you're using create React app, you're good to go. You just need to be able to basically build it out into static files. And I'll show you how to do that. So I'm just going to walk you through doing it with these projects here. First thing I'm going to do is clone each one. I have terminal split here. I'm just going to get clone on my left one here. I'm going to call it client. I'm going to cd in the client. I'm going to type yarn to install the dependencies. And I'm going to come back over here and do the same thing for the back end. Um, get clone. Spell it right, server. So also for this project, it uses Mongo. So if you are grabbing this, make sure you have a Mongo server set up. And I'm going to type yarn. So OK, we're selling the dependencies for both of these guys. When they are done, what we're going to do is our end product we would like to do is do npm start on our server here, and then our React application works too. Normally what you've seen me do in the past and maybe what you're familiar with is I'll start uh, npm in one, one terminal window and npm in another. So you got two servers running, the server and the client, and they'll talk to each other. So for this, we're going to get them all running on one. And how we're going to do that is if you notice in the server, there is this public folder. And if I look what the public folder looks like, it's just HTML files. So our server, we go to source app, oops, app.js, you'll notice app.use slash feathers.static, and there's the public folder. So what it's doing is it's serving these public, so static files is just HTML, JavaScript, CSS. That's what they're considering static. So you can grab those, any files you put in public, and it'll, if you go there to this index route, you can see it. So that's what exactly what we're going to do with our project here. So I'm going to open up the client code um, in Visual Studio Code. That way we can make one quick change. And that is in our source folder, modules, index. You'll notice that I'm actually looking for localhost 3030. But since they're going to be running on the same server, we actually want to leave this an empty string. Um, and that is important because the empty string lets us query the same server we are on. So we can close this now, we're good to go. Um, so in your product, you just wanna make sure to change any you know, requests you make to your server that are pointed at you know, just the, an empty string or like slash users. You'll notice how you don't specify where the URL is. Okay, so we have that. We have our server here, and it's looking for a public folder right now, and it'll serve that. So what we want to do is we're going to do npm run build. And what this does is if you're using create react app, it will actually go ahead and create this public folder for you, for your react application. Now they call it build, that's okay. What we're going to do is copy it into our public and call it public. So I'm going to remove the public folder because we don't need it for our server. And the copy with dash r flag can be used to copy folders over. So you want to copy the whole folder that is about to be created with this optimized production build. So I'm going to go up a folder, go into client, and then grab the build folder. And I want to rename it public because that's what our server is grabbing. So we grab this. And you'll notice if we do just a quick ls in the public, you'll notice how there is 
there's an index.html file, and there's a static folder. And static.js. So there is one JavaScript file and an HTML file, and that's our whole React application. npm run build just grabbed all the JS files for our project and put it into those two. So now if I do npm start, we're starting just one server now, our backend on localhost 3030. Let's come over here. And now if I come to localhost 3030, we should see our application up. And cool, we do. And we can click on things and we can use our application. So this might look like it's working, but there's one last thing we need to change to for sure get it working. And that is, there's one problem right now. If I go to Notice how the URL is changing up here. I can go to sign up and go to login, it's changing. But if I were to go there directly, right? Because you see me clicking these buttons to go to the different URLs. If I were to just go to login directly, we'll actually get a 404. And the reason for this is we shut down the server and we don't need this one anymore. So just our server up and running, if I go into source app.js for our server, you'll notice how we're serving the static files in the index page. That's what the slash means. So if we come to just the slash, our static files are served. But we also want them served in slash login. And what we really want is them to be served in any page that is not our server. Because, right, we can access our server from here, too. Um, that's the cool thing about this. Like, if I go to slash, I think recipes, it might be, oh, we didn't have it up. It is. So, when, when I start up the server, I'll show you that, guys, that. But basically, what's happening is it wants to show the static files when we have static files otherwise serve the server. And to catch all, what we can do is we can actually copy this line here and we can move it down here and we just change that to a star. And star is like a catch all. And make sure you have both because you need both of them. Uh, we'll catch all so when we go to this other page, it'll actually work. So if I do npm start, it'll start up. And now if I go into login, I can see BAM takes me to the login page and now everything is working. So that is, that is how you combine these things together. Now I'm going to just try to go to slash recipes and see if it will show me them. It might be, you might need to be authenticated, but nope. Okay, cool. So you'll notice how, this is just a bunch of JSON here. Um, you'll notice how when I go to slash recipes, the server is getting data, right? This is JSON data. And this is not static. This is actually our Feathers.js server. But now if I go to this page, it serves our React application. So depending on the route we go to, it'll serve our server or it'll serve our React application, but they're all on localhost 3030. So that is pretty cool. So that's it for this video, guys. Um, as you can see, it's actually pretty easy with Create React App to bundle it together with your server, it really, you're really just telling your server, it's a two-step process. It's creating this public folder from your React application and then pointing, telling your feathers or your express server to do these static files. So that is it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.